The Hollywood sign is an American landmark and cultural icon overlooking an area in Los Angeles, California that rises 45 feet over the hills of the city. The sign is located on Mount Lee in the Beechwood Canyon area of the Santa Monica Mountains. Built in 1923, each wooden letter spelled out the name Hollywood Land and was used as a temporary advertisement to promote housing development, originally only to be on display for about a year and a half. Because of its marvelous recognition and it being synonymous with the land of hopes and dreams during the rise of American cinema in Los Angeles during the golden age of Hollywood, the sign was left up. In the early 1940s, the Hollywood real estate development project went bust and the sign itself was in desperate need of repairs. By 1944, it became the property of the city and in 1949, the name was shortened to Hollywood to reflect the district and not the housing development. In 1978, the sign was replaced with a more durable steel with each uppercase white letters that are 45 feet tall, spanning a distance of 350 feet long. The name Hollywood has become synonymous with fame and fortune, where people from all walks of life flock to with dreams of making it big in the entertainment industry. It is also a tourist attraction and because of its widespread recognition and visibility from many points across the LA basin, the sign has been a target of pranks and vandalism across the decades. With restoration projects in the past, the site where the sign stands today has also been installed with a security system to deter mischief and is protected by the nonprofit organization of the Hollywood Sign Trust, along with the surrounding land, which is part of Griffith Park. But there is another reason why the sign will always be remembered, the tragic 1932 death of the young actress, Peg Entwistle. So please kick back and enjoy the story. Also, please take a second to subscribe if you haven't yet and ring the notifications bell for new content. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thank you for your loyalty and supporting the channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're a first time viewer, I'm happy you found me. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, and click the notifications for new content. Again, welcome, and let's get into the story. Millicent Lillian Entwistle, otherwise known as Peg, was born in 1908 in Wales, a country that is part of the United Kingdom, to English parents Emily and Robert Entwistle, and spent her early youth in West Kensington, London. She moved from England to America at an early age with her father, who was also a play actor. Like her father in 1925, at the age of 17, she became a stage actress on Broadway and aspired to transform herself into a film star in hopes of achieving a successful acting career. According to a biography written by James Zurich Jr., it is unknown what happened to her mother, Emily, as there is very little known information about her mother's life or her death. Her parents divorced in 1910 when she was just two years old, and there have been many false claims that her mother died when she was just a small child. However, in a last will and testament dated in 1922 in the Entwistle family archives, her father's statement basically said that through his divorce in 1910 to Peg's mother, Emily, he won custody of his daughter and that he never wanted her to have any rights to see Peg, who was only two years old at the time and most likely never knew her mother. So this may be the reason people thought her mother died and Peg likely never saw or spoke to her mother again. Robert's first wife, Emily, probably remained in London. When in 1912, at the age of four, Peg and her father immigrated to America where they first arrived in Ohio, then moved and settled in New York in 1913, where Robert worked as a theater stage manager. 
He soon remarried and had two sons with his second wife, Loretta. Peg was very close to her stepmother and considered her to be her real mom. When Peg was 13, she began to experience tragedy in her life when in 1921, her stepmother Loretta became sick and died from bacterial meningitis. Then, just one year later, tragedy would strike in her life again, when in 1922, her father was the victim of a hit-and-run limousine driver on Park Avenue and 72nd Street in New York City that ended his life. Leaving Peg and her two younger half-brothers orphaned, they were taken into custody by their uncle Harold, who had come to New York and who was also the manager of a Broadway actor named Walter Hampton. In 1925, when Peg was 17, she began to pursue her stage career as an actress, appearing in several Broadway productions. On one occasion, a young Betty Davis idolized Peg after saying, I want to be just like Peg Entwistle, after attending a Broadway play and watching her perform in The Wild Duck. One year later, in 1926, an 18-year-old Peg would receive an impressive accolade when she was accepted into the prestigious New York Theater Guild. By 1931, when the country was in the throes of the Great Depression, Broadway plays were hit hard, closing their doors as soon as they opened. At 23 years old, she moved to California and lived with her Uncle Charles in Los Angeles to pursue an acting career in hopes to grace the silver screen during the golden age of Hollywood. By this time, talking pictures, also known as talkies, began to hush the silent film industry and because Peg was used to performing in live plays with speaking parts, she was certain her foot would be in the door to break into the industry with no problem. While living in Los Angeles, Peg aspired to become a famous movie star, but found herself struggling to fulfill that goal when she auditioned for roles she was unable to get. This was devastating to her. She felt like a failure and began to lose all hope that her dreams of becoming a star would never come to fruition. In 1932, at the age of 24, Peg finally secured a small supporting role in the one and only screen performance she would ever have for the film 13 Women, portraying a character by the name of Hazel Cousins. The plot involved a group of former sorority sisters who form a pact to either take their own lives or that of each other. Peg's character in the movie ends up taking the life of her husband instead, which lands her in prison. Originally, she had 16 minutes total screen time, but by the time it reached the cutting room floor, editors reduced her on-screen performance to only four minutes. She would never attend the premiere as the movie was released after her death. Unfortunately, instead of becoming a Hollywood star, on September 16, 1932, at the age of 24, she achieved notoriety by making the Hollywood sign famous instead. She took off walking from her uncle's home on Beechwood Drive towards the hill where the sign still exists today. She proceeded to hike up the mountain and used a workman's ladder to climb to the top of the sign where she jumped to her death, swan diving from the letter H. Peg Antwistle's body was found two days later on September 18, 1932, when a woman hiking below the sign discovered a woman's shoe, a purse, and a jacket. The woman became curious of who these items belonged to, and she searched the purse for identification and found that Peg left a handwritten note explaining her despair and placed it inside the purse. The hiker then looked down the mountain and saw the lifeless body of Peg Entwistle about 100 feet below. The woman notified the Los Angeles Police Department, then gathered the items she found belonging to Peg, the shoe, the purse, and the jacket along with the note then laid them on the steps of the Hollywood police station. The note read, I am afraid. I am a coward. I am sorry for everything. If I had done this a long time ago, it would have saved a lot of pain. Signed with her initials, P.E. The note not only conveys how devastated she was, but that she failed in life. She felt shame that her ambitions seemed to be too ambitious. When you analyze the note of those three short lines, it was evident she felt she could never face the world again. The movie, 13 Women, in which her role was cut to four minutes of screen time, 
and RKO releasing her from her contract is what people believed were the reasons that caused her to end her life and why she chose the iconic sign as the location. But her uncle who she lived with and the one to identify her body claimed that he did not believe that her failing career was the reason why. He said Peg could be impulsive and moody. Two words that come to mind, although I am not a mental health doctor, that make me think she may have been struggling with bipolar 1 disorder. And there were other factors in her life she was dealing with. The death and sudden loss of her parents and her short-lived marriage to actor Robert Keith in 1927 and the fact he withheld information from her that she didn't find out about until after they were married. That he had been married before and had a six-year-old son. When she divorced him in 1929, he wasted no time and remarried shortly after their divorce and Peg felt disgraced. She thought that her success as a stage actress on Broadway would follow her to California, the place where dreams come true, only to realize it was also the place where dreams go to die. Since her death, people claim that her spirit haunts the mountain. Hikers and park rangers have often reported seeing a woman dressed in 1930s clothing that would appear out of nowhere only to disappear before their very eyes, while others visiting the hiking trails of Griffith Park have claimed to be overwhelmed with the scent of a gardenia, Peg's favorite perfume, and flower. Two days after she died, a rumor was started that she received a letter in the mail offering her a lead role in a play from a theater company about a woman driven to take her life, much like her own plight. But this has never been confirmed to be true, but a sick joke instead. However, her brother, Milton Antwistle, who was 12 years old at the time, did recall that a letter arrived shortly after her death from RKO, offering her a lead role in a movie, but that he couldn't recall the name of the film, only that it upset his uncle that the studio mailed a letter instead of phoning about the offer. Peg's funeral was held in Hollywood at the W.M. Strathers Mortuary on the 20th of September. Her body was cremated and her ashes sent to Glendale, Ohio to be buried next to her father at Oak Hill Cemetery. Her story is legendary and a cautionary tale. For Peg, Hollywood became the boulevard of broken dreams and not only broke her spirit, but also her heart. For new content and breaking news stories, please be sure to click the notifications to follow along and be notified when updates are available. Don't forget to like, comment, and please feel free to share. You can also join my Facebook group for True Crime and History Time and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. My usernames for those platforms are at Jerry Scarborough Official. And as always, thank you for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel.